quarantine, Halloween. I know, I know, it sucks. But for a lot of us, it just is what it is. But it doesn't mean we're gonna compromise on fun. Oh, no, 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 no. Hello, my spoopy friends. That was lame. Welcome back to the merriest place on the internet. I've got some quarantine Halloween ideas for celebrating safely and responsibly. Oh my gosh, how after school special am I? We are full swing in Halloween time and I've got all kinds of videos helping you celebrate it and helping you have Halloween your way with your style. Double check that you're subscribed because you're not gonna wanna miss any of those. And Christmas is just around the corner and we all know what that means. Halloween is going to be awesome. Trust me. Nothing is canceled, everything is fun and awesome. It just might be different, that's all. I'm gonna cover trick-or-treating and house parties. Alrighty, let's start with trick-or-treating because like that's the one taking a big hit this year. You got children with broken hearts and that's a lot different than frat boys with drunken hearts. Not that you super cool party people don't matter. I just have a kid and so that's like where my brain's at. We're gonna cover trick-or-treating alternatives and ways to trick-or-treat safely and responsibly. In terms of trick-or-treating alternatives, a lot of people are suggesting in-home trick-or-treating where you just close all the doors and, you know, parents and siblings stand behind doors and kids go around knocking on each, you know, bedroom, bathroom, kitchen. I have some qualms with this. As a parent, I feel like that is going to be both underwhelming and like lightning fast for kids. I just feel like it's not going to have the same excitement as going out in the dark where it's cold and there's people trick-or-treating. And it's going to go really, really fast because like houses aren't as big as neighborhoods. I think you can still do the in-home trick-or-treating thing that way, but I think you need to spice it up a bit. And this is where you need to get a little creative, but a few ideas for you are maybe you make the kid perform a certain task to earn the candy. Make a shrieky ghost noise. Tell a joke. Do a dance. Tell a ghost story. Who's your favorite? Nightmare Before Christmas character. Maybe they have to answer, is Nightmare Before Christmas a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? Maybe don't get that deep with it because like it's supposed to be fun. Make them do something silly and funny before you'll give them the candy. It just makes it last this much longer and you don't know what you're gonna get from a kid, so you might get some laughs along the way for everyone. You could also kind of go above and beyond with the trick-or-treat candy you give your kids when they knock on your bedroom door. Get those like Hershey's baking chocolate bars, the ones as big as your face. Maybe you give them a can of soda, a pack of gum, something that's a little bigger. Honestly, if you do it this way, they'll get less candy, but like be more excited. That also means there will be less candy for you to eat after they go to bed. Pros and cons. You could also, instead of going door to door, you could set it up like a scavenger hunt or like an Easter egg hunt. Make them find it. Hide it good, like good. Yeah. Yeah. Make a treasure map for it maybe. Buy double the candy that they would have gotten trick-or-treating. Scary, I know, but like it's Halloween. Maybe you almost do it like plastic Easter egg style. You do more than like candy. Maybe you got little toys. Maybe you got stickers. Maybe you got coins. Money. Money is always a win. Something a little bigger and badder than candy. Level it up. Just to help it last a little longer and to be a little larger than life. Trick-or-treating is like the coolest thing ever. Whatever you do at home needs to be at the same level of fun. Not necessarily the exact same activity, just at the same level of awesome. A few other ideas for trick-or-treating alternatives I have for you are a pinata. Involves candy. Involves violence. Halloween. You could turn your house into a haunted house. You have the kids turn the house into a haunted house and make the parents walk through it. We used to do that at sleepovers with my cousins and like May the gods bless my aunt and uncle for walking through those because dang. But we had a really, really great time. It was super fun for us, so just an idea. Take the candy you get, however you decide to distribute it, and make a haunted gingerbread house. Buy a gingerbread house kit and then use the trick-or-treat candy to decorate it. Then you can eat it while you watch your favorite family Halloween movie. Favorite family Halloween flick. Fluff, 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 fluff. You could also throw a Halloween party as if you were inviting a bunch of people, but just keep it to your little family that lives in your house. Seriously, go like all out. Music, decor, lights, fun food, all the goodness that would be at a Halloween party where you're inviting a hundred people, but it's just your little family, so it's like extra special because you did it just for them, not for people outside of your household. That's what makes it special, you did it for them. We can just like knock on doors and twirl in our costumes and yell happy Halloween and run away. Have a pumpkin carving competition. Yeah, I say pumpkins, not pumpkins. Deal with it. Just keep in mind this year, however your Halloween is gonna go, traditionally, conventionally, totally different, whatever, keep in mind 
that kids just want to spend time with you. That's all they really want. If you dedicate spending time with them in a Halloween-y sort of way, they're probably going to be just as happy with it as if you went trick-or-treating. You don't have to go over the top. You don't have to make it super extra out of this world, whatever. Just spend time with them with your full focus, doing something you think might be fun. That's all you have to do. And try to incorporate a costume because honestly, that's the most fun part of Halloween. If it's safe enough in your area for conventional trick-or-treating, I do have a few little extra tips for you. The first one might be obvious by now. Make sure you incorporate a mask with the costume. We kind of started with the mask. My kiddo, her mask is like a little kitty cat face. Her Halloween costume is going to be cat based because like, it's already there. My mask is like glittery with like greens and blues and it's very like mermaid looking. One little kid said I look like a mermaid when I was wearing it and I was like, huh, yeah. So like, I'm probably gonna be a mermaid. Again, I was a mermaid last year. Take your mask into account. You can get masks anywhere, everywhere, in every different kind. Teespring does print on demand masks. That's how I made the sparkle on mask. You can go get one, link in the description below. But make sure you incorporate your mask in trick or treating just so that we're all being responsible. Or you could just buy a hoodie that turns into a costume. My face is covered. Spooky, scary skeleton. Stop. Gloves are also not a bad idea if you can find a way to have gloves. Be Cinderella. Get a glass mask instead of a glass slipper. Don't do that. Also, make sure that you're being really careful about reaching in to buckets and things like that. Washing our hands before we're putting our hands in our mouth. You know, children. I'm speaking to the children. I'm not saying like Lysol spray the candy because that's still going to get in their mouth, which is not good. You should not ingest that. As for the candy you will be handing out, you need to be mindful of that as well. The big community bucket, I don't necessarily recommend. <laughs> Kids, like just know their nature and like, ooh. For us, I'm either gonna be taking my Halloween tree and putting a whole bunch of candy on it individually in a bunch of different places so kids can just pick a piece or two off. I have a tutorial on how I did the tree right here. Or I'm going to take my mini candy buckets that I have that are also on the Halloween tree and just filling those with two or three pieces of fun size candy and setting those out so kids can just pick up a bucket. I have an affiliate link for the mini candy buckets I got in the description below if you wanna grab some of those. This is a great opportunity to get a little creative with how you're gonna hand out your trick or treat candy this year. Be mindful, be responsible, all right, let's talk parties. I hope this video is helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you're like, yeah, I need to think about this, or no, nah, you know, you move on. Cause I just have a sinking feeling I'm gonna have to make one for Christmas. So let me know in the comments below if this is helpful and if you want a quarantine Christmas video. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be great. It's not canceled. Halloween's not canceled, Christmas isn't canceled. Everything is gonna be magical and wonderful. It's gonna be just as much fun, it just may be a little bit different kind of fun. That's all. All right, let's talk parties. By now we are all familiar with the Zoom meeting, Skype meeting, video meeting, video call, Facebook messengers, been a champion throughout this whole thing. So it's just time to add some spooky fun to those video things. My first idea is to have a Halloween house decorating contest. Basically you throw a Halloween video party and then everybody stays at home, but they all log into like the Zoom call or the messenger group or whatever. You each decorate your house and then one at a time you give a house tour of all your super neat decorations and then at the end of it, y'all pick a winner. Or nobody has to win. I guess not everything has to be a competition. You can just enjoy the decor. You could do the same thing with jack-o'-lantern carving. Maybe you carve them together, like through a video call. Everybody's just carving and laughing and having a good time and eating what they want and drinking what they want and listening to what they want and everything's holly jolly great. Boogly boogly great. Sorry. And then you show them all off at the end and maybe you have a winner. Do the Halloween party things you would do at a Halloween party just via video. It's not gonna be that different. You know, it is gonna be different, but it's gonna be the kind of different that makes it like kind of funny. You could also all start a movie together, like all of you just hit play on Netflix at the same time and like watch a movie and laugh about it. You could also do regular party games. You could play charades, Pictionary. You could do like an interview type game where like you ask everybody questions, but everybody has to answer as the person they're dressed as. Yeah. Karaoke on a video call totally works. You could do a one word scary story. One word stories are an improv warm up that I used to do with my cast. It's an improv comedy warm up and they're very fun. You just go around and you tell a story, but only one word at a time. So each person says a word. Once upon a time. There was a possum. 
totally works on a video call. Video call dance parties are a thing. I know it's not the same thing as getting together in person with all your friends, but you can still do it. That's not an excuse to not get together with people you love. You just have to do it through a screen. And you know what? They're still there. You're still with them. I know it's different, but it's not bad. Connect with people digitally. That's what the holidays are about anyway, connecting with people. We're just gonna connect via internet. And don't take it too seriously. Like, yeah, it's kind of ridiculous to have everybody dancing by themselves together. Embrace that. Embrace the weird, funny little position that we're all in right now and just roll with it. It's ridiculous. But that's kind of what makes it awesome. If you can't be ridiculous on Halloween, when can you? Just embrace this craziness and laugh at it. Have a fun video party. Experiment, get creative, and have a happy Halloween. Again, I hope this was helpful. I really went back and forth on making this video because like nobody really wants to talk about it anymore, but at the same time, we kind of have to talk about it because it's like all in our face all the time. I just thought, well, I might want to watch that video. I'm fun and sparkly. And so I thought, here are some ways that we don't have to compromise on the fun because we don't. Quarantine doesn't mean no fun. It just means different fun. So I hope this video was helpful. I almost didn't make it. I just didn't want to make you sad, but I did and we're here and I hope it helped. If you want to see how I decorated this super cute, super fun Halloween tree, you can click or tap right up here. And if you need a little help with your Halloween decor, I've got a video right here with some Halloween themes and ideas. I hope your Halloween is fun and full of silly new memories. And until we meet again, sparkle on. This skeleton hoodie is super too big for me, but it's Halloween, so I'm wearing it anyway.